Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first episode of a reboot of my career. Now, if you follow my channel, which you don't, you may have noticed that I did start this sort of as a junior in college, but there was a couple things that I didn't like about it. One was um, I couldn't get um, a voiceover, and I wanted to look at, uh, do this like a retrospective. The other thing was that... Um, I wasn't really happy with the graphics and stuff using the NCAA 2000. This is Maximum Football 19. I know Maximum Football 20 is out. I don't have it yet. I will get it for Season 2. But I had already gone through and created these teams. Now, what this is, is 1992, I started playing football. Modified football in uh, this uh, Section 7 of upstate New York. And as a member of the Petroba Middle School Redskins. And if you're offended by that, too bad. This is actual history. This isn't... Uh, we're not going to sugarcoat anything with this. And I am not going to control it because I am going to comment as if it were memories. We don't know where I'm going to go in my career. Everything is going to be based on the potentiality of how I play. I have put myself in as the starter. Eighth grade is the top of modified football. There were several other eighth grade quarterbacks. There were 50 some odd players on the team. I do have the roster... From that year, I am not able to edit, like, uh, um, weights, ethnicity, uniforms, and all that. So everybody is going to be the base characters they were. And I am my, I'm the only one that I put playing both ways, although we all did, but there was just not enough guys on the team to have everybody play both ways. So I made decisions on who would be better on offense or defense. And I did, using the depth chart, was able to put guys in. Uh, where they would have played, for instance. The names on the Malone Huskies. I don't have that roster. We never played them again after this scrimmage. I actually did not play in this scrimmage, too. So this is another thing where we will uh, diverge from reality. I was the water boy for this scrimmage because I was involved in a, a traumatic head injury issue the Wednesday before. We played on Wednesdays. The Wednesday before, I was... Um, three different occurrences I had my head slammed against things we're watching the coin toss here um had a football spiked on my head because I, I went to tackle a guy too high I tripped in gym class and hit head to head with a, a another female or another female a female as we were running, and then during soccer I got smacked in the head with a soccer ball, so I was diagnosed with concussion and missed this, the two scrimmages that were played at the same time on the same field in one of the most confusing things ever, as the two sides played 50 yard fields and all three teams played each other. I will be bringing to you. That's Ryan Rattel in return. The, the two scrimmages as individual games. They were also... No score was kept. But I kept them... Well, except for the scrimmages in my head. It modified a lot of different rules from modified football to high school and JV. But we will obviously be using U.S. College because that's what's on the game. So it was a handoff to Rattel. And Rattel gets no gain. Now, Ryan Rattel was one of our star athletes in, in high school. Both uh, football and hockey. Somewhat disappeared afterwards, though. Did not go into play college or semi-pro sports anywhere, but uh, he was a good athlete. Set a touchdown record and once we get to varsity. Hopefully by then there will be a better um, game and I will be able to edit ratings and all that. But, you know, for the time being, it is what it is. So Vincent calling an audible, obviously something that was not allowed in modified football. And he takes off running. And yes, I wore number 11. I wanted wear either 12 or 13. Or 19, but 19 was never available throughout my time from 8th grade to 12th grade. And in 11th or 8th grade, there was no 13. 12 was taken by two other uh, quarterbacks who had played the year before in 7th grade, and I did not. So I was stuck picking number 11. There's another run by Vincent, and that is going to force a 4th down and a punt, punting situation. And Rattel would drop back to punt. The one beautiful thing about 
maximum football is you can have two different players wearing the same number. So the fact that I have to create a Ryan Rattel at both running back and punter, he can both be wearing number 47, and that is just awesome. Now, like I said, uh, looks like I really screwed up the, the Malone's colors were green and white. So, didn't get that quite right. Looks like there's red on their sleeves, but whatever. Again, we're never going to see them again after this. And there is a sack. It looks like it's Peter Schmidt and Peter Schmidt. So that's, uh, what are the mistakes of, uh, oh no, actually, more than one player wore 83. That's right. Maybe I should bring the roster up because I'm having an issue remembering. So they said motion on second down and 13. And the quarterback, is he's hung up on the running back. He takes off running. And he's going to be hit and dropped after losing a yard. So it will go down as a sack. And that was by number 75, Mark Chick. Mark Chick on the sack. A transfer student from the Cranberry Lake area to Cernic Lake in 8th grade and only played in 8th grade. Quarterback back to pass again. Completes out in the flat. And there the Redskins converge. Mark Chick and James Muldoon will make the tackle and will force a punt. So the Redskins will get the ball back after uh, punting themselves on first down. Rattel calling for a fair catch inside his own 10. Not very smart. All right, so for the rest of this game, I'm going to go into memorial mode, memory mode, as if I am reminiscing on a career well played. So Kipping is the center. He only played uh, 7th and 8th grade. Of course, I, uh, I only played with him in 8th grade. He was a, a tenacious, feisty kid, I remember. But Dustin Plumador getting the handoff. Dustin Plumador would go on to start at Army. One of the few of his Redskins who played college football, along with myself. Scott Granish. And I think that's it. So my first pass attempt. I was very nervous going into this game. September 1992. I'm 13 years old. You know, and... <clears throat> did not have the... Uh, requisite skills that I would need to get through a game yet, but, you know, I was taller than the other two quarterbacks, so that helped me. Or at least taller than the other, the 8th grade quarterbacks. There was a 7th grader who was taller than me, obviously. We we'll pass out on the flat, the plummetor, and that is going to force a fourth down. Bad decision on my part. You know, but it's a scrimmage, it's learning an adventure. Of Of course, it forces Rattel to punt from his own goal line, but he was the one that called the fair catch, right? Good coverage. By Jesse Webb getting down there and making the tackle. So, back on the sidelines now, watching as the defense takes over. Just hoping they come away with uh, the ball back. Ken Wilson Field in Cernic Lake, New York. You know, 12 and 13 year old kids don't exactly play lights out football, that's for sure. He's got a lot of time. And that pass falls harmlessly to the ground after it kind of floated out there to the receiver. Facing a third down now. And they go with the option, but luckily Mark Chick is right there to make the tackle. And that'll force a punt. Again, if you came to see great football, well, 7th and 8th graders did not provide that. Again, going back for a fair catch, this time inside his own 5. 
not the smartest of situations. So I'm going to stand on my own goal line now. A shotgun is something we didn't actually use in Modified, but taking off running. And that's a good first down. <clears throat> I will upgrade to Maximum Football 20 when we get through this 92 season. Hopefully there's some improvements as far as uniforms. and Audible, moving Plumidor over to the left. Just missed fires on my... Still looking for my first completion. So third down now, or second down, still cannot find the handles to get my first pass completion. Third down and ten. I forgot that I had gotten the first down running the ball. So third and ten. Got good protection. Had a streaking receiver Beat coverage, but I just I could not get the ball to him. Didn't have the arm strength. And it fell incomplete. So we were able to pick up about 12, 13 yards on that drive, but uh, still have to punt it away. And at this point, you're just hoping that Malone continues to not do any better. Jesse Webb again on the tackle. Another good thing I like about this game is that you can switch depth charts on the kick coverage and all that. Running back. Rattel coming up big on the defensive uh, tackle. Second and 18. That pass should have been intercepted. I don't know about this game. Now, you know, it'll work. It'll work as using it for 8th grade, but hopefully the improved dynamics on certain things in maximum football 20. I really want this game to succeed. Really want this to succeed. The fact that I could not design my own field and there's a white helmet in the field, though, that's... This time it is intercepted by Ben Moody. So, we get our best field position inside their own territory. And throwing into double coverage, luckily, was not intercepted. I'm like 0 for 5 at this point. At this point, I don't see myself starting the other scrimmage against Tupper Lake, honestly. A little bit of a shift. Dumps it off, gets my first completion to Big Dustin Plumidor, who, once we get to high school, became an offensive and defensive lineman and one of the best in Cernic Lake history. Don't know where he is nowadays. One of the few guys who's not on Facebook, but... And these shoulder pads do not do him justice either. He was a big man in 8th grade playing fullback. Throws it out to the pass. It's complete to BJ. No, to Richie Hewitt, number 84. Richie Hewitt on the reception. Big tight end. And a first down. So my first two completions now. Plumidor and Hewitt. Two targets I would not have in high school. Changing things up again. Overthrows. It looked like I was looking for Rattel on that play, but just overthrows the pass. 
It's funny, I don't remember being this heavily of a passing team. But, you know, one of the beautiful things about 8th grade football is I called my own plays. I was like Terry Bradshaw. I called my own plays. Of course, in the, the unit I was in, and um, in real life now, let's talk real life, the unit I was in, I called... Uh, oh, that pass is complete to Jesse Webb. Huge first down. Uh, I had two tremendous running backs, Wade Holtz and Dennis Rasko, and I would just run Rasko to the right, Holtz to the left, myself up the middle, and <clears throat> that was our game plan. Did not have a big passing game in real life in 8th grade. Plumador on the carry, and he's going to get down to the 6 or 7 yard line. Second and goal from the 7. Oh, it looks nothing like Sir Nick Lake in the background either, by the way. In case you weren't. Taking his time and throwing into quadruple coverage. That, that seems like an 8th grade thing to do. It really does. So third and goal. The middle is wide open. Pass is complete to Dylan Horning out on the left. And he almost gets into the end zone. That would have been my first touchdown pass. But The field goes good, and Petrova leads 3 nothing as Will Chaston puts the hole down for Rattel's kick. Will Chaston was actually a starter and was a tremendous athlete, and had he not moved out of town, I never would have played quarterback in, in high school. Just wouldn't have. It would have been. Because the other 8th grade quarterbacks, Jason Niederbeel and Darren Lindsay, did not move on to play high school sports. But Chaston was a tremendous athlete, both linebacker and quarterback, and I would not have been... Even sniff in the field, I would have switched to receiver or something because it just wouldn't have been in the in the in the cards. And the kickoff is taken. Weird little EA Madden type dance where it didn't need to. Hewitt makes a tackle. We got a first down play here. Looks like a double safety blitz. And I'm going to... So a second down now and 10 from their own 15 yard line. First quarter is running down. <clears throat> One of the reasons why you won't see Malone again is they're actually from Section 10, at least in that time. I don't know. The, the two schools have merged sections, demerged sections, split sections, moved sections. It's weird because they're about 30 miles apart, but uh, they played in two different sections. And one of the reasons why they... Um, played is because Section 10 didn't have the same type of program as Section 7 did. They had more Pop Warner type program. And, well, it is what it is. Well, there's the punt. Rattel going to call for the fair catch. So I'm back out there now, still looking for my first touchdown pass, but at least I have some completions. Option pitch out to Plumador, and it was just sniffed out. Yeah, there's too much, way too much orange in Malone's. I don't, I, I do have part of these two scrimmages on video. I'll, I'm going to have to look. It's like a, a audio video club that did it, so it's not the best recording. I'll have to look and see if I can get that up on YouTube at some point. I think it's on my old computer. That one should have been intercepted as well. So 
So third and long. Let's see, second quarter actually. Nope, still first. Oh, well, the mill is wide open for a run. And instead throwing into double coverage and will force support them. Well, Rattel gets the kick away. Fair catch at the 15. So after one quarter, not a lot of offense. Passing completions, uh, 5 of 14, 38 yards. I mean, it's a start. You know, we're, we're hoping that uh, this thing, by the time we get to high school, is fired up and we're, we're throwing bombs all over the place. But And that one's almost intercepted as well. But again, hey, at least this game is making us look like 8th graders. Another incomplete pass. I don't know as if he's completed a pass yet. I, I didn't look at that side of the stats. Alright, so... That was a long first quarter, almost 20 minutes of action. That's going to make this a long game. Pass is complete to John Niederbuehl. John Niederbuehl, again, another player who will not go on to play in high school. One of the taller players on the team. Nice target at tight end. Okay, I'm getting a phone call, so I'm going to unplug. Okay, that was a very important call about my extended warranty in my car. So, third down, or second down and ten after misfire to the end zone. Defense is shifting, and I look to be changing the plays. That was another pass that should have been intercepted. I should have thrown about five interceptions by this point. You know, one of the things I really remember about 92, though, going into that season was that um, I loved the quarterbacks, always have, always will. It's just what I am. I wanted to will myself to be one of the greats. And I patterned myself. My cadence was after John Elway, my uh, communication at the line. Uh, I my look was more Jim McManish because I wore a visor, not in eighth grade. I didn't, and um, my throwing motion was kind of a combination of Elway and Kelly. Of course, they didn't have the arm for that, and I had coaching staff that wanted to, to turn me into a Dan Reno. I always said he was a Dolphins fan and thought I should have the ball up on my ear the minute it snapped, but it just wasn't comfortable, and it's not comfortable for most. But another field goal by Rattel, and we got a six nothing lead now. Nice big completion to Niederbuehl down the field. And, um, but I was only one of four passing for 33 yards on that, so my completion percentage is not good. So, another kickoff this time for Chaston. Actually, I think Chaston is the one kicking the extra points. He was a tremendous athlete. I actually should do a Facebook search on him. I, I doubt he'd remember me anyway, because he was only with us for two years, 7th and 8th grade, but my goodness, was he a good athlete. Both football, basketball, and funny. Here's John 
Well, like I said, he benefited me by moving, so I got to play quarterback. And I'm talking real me now. I get to be the the only quarterback in the class of '97. Although I never, I only started in eighth grade, and and it was only for the B squad, the B side. So that pass is complete. Oh, he reaches for it, juggles a little bit, but comes back up, and he's going to get it about eight yards on the on the reception. So, so seven yards officially to be second down and three for the Malone Huskies. Now, in high school, they were known as Franklin Academy. I did not give them that name, and a lot of this is misconceptions on my part. I did not know much about that school and would not know much about that school until I met some of them in college. So to me, they were just always Malone, but as I would learn years later, that they went by the name of Franklin Academy, and, and I, I almost wonder if it was just the high school that went by that name. It was one of those, there's a lot of free academies up here in northern New York, uh, Utica, Ogdensburg, Rome, not Utica, Rome, Ogdensburg, uh, free academies. But Franklin, it just said academy, so I'm not sure what the deal is with that, if it was something just old school. or. But for the purposes of eighth grade, I just used the term alone in my my real life notebooks and dealings with that. So, And our name, as you see, is Petrova even though we're in Cernic Lake. Well, that's the name of the middle school. Fair catch, another one called for by Rattel. <clears throat> and um, we referred to ourselves as the Petrova Redskins. In the schedule, we were listed as Cernic Lake, which is, of course, only natural. One game I did will cut out and not show is the B-Bowl. It's the 7th and 8th graders who did not play a lot. We're given a scrimmage in late October. And it was myself against Jim Donis, the two quarterbacks who would go on to compete throughout high school. Uh, it was ironic that we were in the B-Bowl. But um, we lost that game 8-6. And the reason I won't is because I put myself starting with the A squad. So The other thing about these two scrimmages, there was actually four scrimmages going on. The two A's played each other, Malone, Tupper Lake, Cernic Lake, and the two B's. And we went 3-1 uh, and one that day. The only loss coming from the A squad to Tupper Lake. And that pass is incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and five. But for the purposes of, you know, uh, making sense out of nonsense, I'm just going to play it as a complete game instead of, because you can't do half field and, unless I did all this practice, which I, I guess I could have. But. Rattel gets the punt away. It's going to bounce and go into the end zone. Now, a punt return in modified football. Let me explain how, in upstate New York, how modified football worked. Um, there was no return. The defense would line up in positions, put their hands up as if they're trying to block a kick, but they could not pressure the kicker. The offense could not block. So it was basically just the kicker kicking and the return man would go fair catch the ball. So, I mean, that's kind of ironic that the uh, return men are fair catching. Nice tackle coming in from number 72. That would have been Todd Hoffnagel on the tackle. Setting up a second down and nine. None of the names, although portraying real people, are meant to actually portray real people. They're just being used as in my as my memories. If any of the real people have a problem with themselves being portrayed in this series, I will gladly change your name for you. And I will even edit the video and mute every place where your name is called. So, third down and six, looking to throw another incomplete pass. They don't put the stats up constantly like Madden does, so there's some things that could need to work on a bit. Another fair catch. Vinny Vincent to throw. Pass complete. I couldn't tell who was. Let's see. Pass interference. Pass interference on Malone. I don't remember a lot of penalties being called in modified sports. They only played football, so. Vincent looking to throw. 
Gonna heave it out near the sidelines. Just a slow floater of a pass. Takes off running and slides. Gets two. Going to make third down and eight. I will keep track of my stats. <clears throat> and we'll kind of be like a RPG type, depending on how I do, you know, what college I go to, whether I make it to SUNY Canton or Florida State. Will uh, you know, a lot of it depend on and where I would get to in the draft and, and whatnot. But so hopefully we'll get to, we'll do good. Going to take off running and pick up another yard. Another fair catch called for him. There, it was a six-game schedule. So we had the two scrimmages on September 24th. This is actually a Thursday. September 24th against uh, Tupper and Malone. And then on um, Wednesday, September 30th, we were home for Plattsburgh. Wednesday, October 7th, at Sable Valley. Wednesday, October 14th, home for Peru. Wednesday, October 21st at Ticonderoga, and Wednesday, October 20th or 28th at Tupper Lake, and that was a split a split game again where A side played A, B side played B, and then um, the the game that should have happened against Malone on November 6th was canceled due to just running into November, and then decided not to do it. So the season ended October 28th. One, two, three, four, five games. And they're going to get a first down. Oh no, it's going to be fourth and one. So five game season. Plus the two scrimmages, plus the b-ball. You know, what's interesting is um, the coaching staff here listed Ed McCarthy, Al Neese, Don Collins. I know Mr. Neese passed away 10, maybe 15 years ago. I don't even... Re I remember Collins, but I don't remember Collins. Like, I don't know what happened to him afterwards. Uh, Mike McCarthy, last I knew, was still alive and doing well, retired and enjoying himself. One of my favorite coaches ever. Sad they only had him for one year. And we also had a, a, a guy named Dick Saran who, who moved up with us all the way through. I don't know if they did that on purpose. They assigned a guy to be with us from 7th through 12th grade, but it just seemed to happen. Well, here we go. This time, we'll give to Plumador. Plumador with a nice hole. He's not going to get... How is that third and two? How is that third and two? It looked like he passed the line of scrimmage. Well, anyway, third and two from the 48. Looks like they've gotten to the yellow line almost. 2.37 to go. Rattel. Oh, nice leap, but he... Uh, you know, he's landed right at the yellow line, and they're going to say fourth and two. Not very fluid motion. Hopefully the makers of the game, and I'm sorry I'm switching between real memories, these fake memories, plus t discussing the game. This is my first look at this game. I did buy it last year to support, but never really got to play it. And I, I do hope it improves, because it is important to have competition for Madden. You know, we've talked enough. Why are they tackling in the end zone? It's a touchback. It, it, we've talked enough about... Um, it's, you know why? Because of the college rules of the Rouge, I think. But hey, whatever. They get a completion. It's going to be a first down. Hopefully also when I get to 11th grade where logos become a helmet, uh, helmet logos became a thing. Hopefully uh, 
got roster share by then and can uh, help me out some because anybody knows that Redskin logo that the Washington football team just recently had to give up is a hard logo to draw. And yes, we did have that logo. So, second down at six, minute 30 to go. We run motion, which we did not run a modified. I kind of do wish I hadn't missed out on the 91 team. You know, able to being able to play with Stearns and Warshaw and Rabidou and guys you can see uh, actual games from the 95 Cynic the Kreskids on my channel that are uploaded. Some of the best teammates I ever had and, and real good friends to this day. I mean, I don't see them. It's not like that, but, you know, good good acquaintances. And <clears throat> they struggled in 91, the the two uh, class of 96 and 97 together, and, and, and it looked like it would be a long high school career, but we were able to pull together and go undefeated in 93 and make the state championship in 95. So... Oh, huge pass, complete for a touchdown. Just got behind the defender and was gone. So now you're looking at staring down the a deficit right before halftime. And uh, on the sideline, you're saying to yourself, well, we need to get one. So now we're down 7-6. to six. Going into closing in on halftime. The other thing is, uh, modified did play 10 minute quarters, so this is realistic. High school modified and JV actually modified might have played eight minute quarters, and it played yeah they played five eight minute quarters. <laughs> I don't I don't know. weird. Um, JV played two four 10 minute quarters. Varsity played 12, at least since they're in, like, they're in the Section 7 New York State football. So they got nothing offensively up until that last minute, and now you're looking at uh, having to come out with a deficit for the first time. Scrimmage or not, you want to, you know, especially when you're 13 years old, you want to be able to get this win. Your return team is not good. You're starting at the 12. 13-year-old doesn't want to take an E, though. He wants to come out, and he wants to throw the ball, and he wants to complete passes and be the hero. Mattel's going to pick up three. But, you know, the, the, um, the smart thing to do, and especially if you want to keep playing, is to call what the coaches tell you. Maybe not this time, though. Low throw. Pass interference. I don't know where that come from, but hey, it's an automatic first down. So, trailing at half. Can't remember the speech that was given, mainly because we didn't actually have halftime. But you, you want to think that the coach just tells everybody that it was one play, you've, you've led throughout, not to let it get down on you, and to come out and play better. Short kick. Oh, what a hit. 
What a very unrealistic looking tackle. And they don't show replays like Madden does, so. Didn't see what number of the truck that was that just killed that return man, but. And that's Mark Chick again on the tackle. Some numbers like 75 was only worn by one person, so. It helps. Going deep again, and knocked away. Kind of reminded of uh, Nintendo looking at animations and stuff. Graphics being more PlayStation 1, hopefully they, or 2 maybe, hopefully they improve on those. Pass out to the left, and they're going to call them for the first down, and Mark Chick was out in coverage. Pretty sure he's a defensive lineman, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But First down at 10. And they're on 28. Handoff is taken. Gain of one. 35. That would be Wade Holtz on the tackle. It's a name you've seen show up in Sack of the Future. You will see throughout the course of my high school days. There's a pass complete and a tackle made by Will Chaston. Nice play defensively. It'll set up a fourth down. punt <clears throat> and our crowd was rabid even in eighth grade you know i see posts now from the corona era and it's just sad seeing the the, the fans have got nothing to do in new york state with no high school football being played so first down and 10 coming from our own 27 Rattel's gonna get three Pass batted down at the uh, field of at the line of scrimmage. Nice pass down the field to Muldoon. Time hand off to Plumber. Looks like we ran into each other. I'll tell you what, if I ran into Plumber, he that would have hurt. <laughs> Motion man coming across. Looks to be Webb. Throws it out in the flat to, Mul to Plumber, and that'll set up a third down. Oh, so another punt in the end zone, another useless tackle that doesn't fit American Wolves. He's still trailing 7-6. 
539 to go in the third. I can remember thinking to myself, we might need a defense to score. We just did not have the running game. Another receiver wide open. But both quarterbacks, myself and this kid from Malone, were struggling to complete passes deep down the field, although he did have the one. That time he gets complete, Muldoon makes the tackle. I come in for tackle there. Defensive appearance along with Holtz and Muldoon. Pass out to the flat, and it looks like they got their own kidney molten. I'm trailing in coverage, but I get the tackle. Defense wasn't my strong suit. You know, I, I envisioned myself as Ronnie Lott, but not necessarily the case. Just gets the pass off before being sacked. Pass is knocked away, setting up a third down and six. <coughs> Two sprites walk between each other, lack of collision detection there. And a fourth down. Now he is being tackled forward, this is where the game is faulty. He's being tackled forward and they mark him where he was first hit. This is going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt. 44 yards. And it's good. So it's 10 to 6. You can't play like this and expect to win. Rattel running backwards with the ball seen that before. He was such a good athlete though that he was usually able to get out of it and come back up and score a touchdown. But. Lomador staying on his feet, picking up eight yards. But again, we went through each other on a handoff. Just awkward looking at best. Second and two, coming out in the shotgun. That pass is complete to Virgil King for the first down. And after a tell, he's going to get three. I had to run. Me and the running back had been dancing for about a half an hour. 
At least it felt like that. Second down and 17. It's got a penalty that I didn't notice. Pass complete to Niederbill. Had a big completion to him earlier in the game, but this one not so much. It'll be third down and 10. Well, seven yard completion is good, but you want to get the you want to get the first down, or at least half. Half of 17 is not seven. Makes it a much harder third down. Especially when you're going to run the ball. Fourth and eight. Two yard pickup. Another fair catch. <clears throat> Pass is complete for a three yard pickup, but immediately Vincent's there to make the tackle. That pass falls incomplete. Knocked away. Let's set up a fourth down. Getting late, 22 seconds to go in the third. Gotta try. I feel like I gotta try to make something happen. So take off running and get a big first down. Oh, oh game of 17. Hey, if I walk close to TV, I can actually see stats are up on the board. There's small print though. That's why I didn't see you before. Number tell is gonna lose. Oh, hey, you can call for the replay. Uh, see you on the third. It's 10 6 Malone. So, third, second down and 13 after the three yard loss by Rattel. That was an ugly, ugly looking pass. Setting up for yet another fourth down. Maybe I need to. I wish I could take the gloves off his hands to make. Nope, they're gonna go for it. I remember feeling pumped up in a, a uh, you know, the adrenaline pumping when this play call came in. As was everybody. But the screen just was not there, and it gave them the ball in, in great field position. Oh, that was third down. This is fourth down. Phew, faulty memory. So instead, they'll get the ball at the nine. Red Path, the quarterback. That's an interesting name. They lose three yards.
Not a lot of offense, that's for sure. Nine minutes to go in the game. Knocked away, should have been intercepted. Would have been a pick six. The receiver just stood there and watched as the defender stepped in front of him and then moved toward the ball. Fourth and 15, a two-yard loss on a quarterback keeper. Mark Chick again on the tackle. The quarterback is holding his hand like there's something wrong with it. Punting from his own end zone. Another fair catch. Wow. Yeah, really fits modified rules. What if it annoyed me, though, because I wanted everything to be realistic and full football, and it just wasn't. This is definitely backwards of plummet or being the tailback and Rattel being the fullback, but... Ouch, that hurt. <clears throat> Did not have time to even look downfield as he was right on top of me. Second and 14. Eight minutes to go. Where did the receiver go? Should have ran it. Threw on the run. That was bad enough. You know, always wanting to be the hero, but also give somebody else a chance to, to get the ball downfield. But I should have, at that point, taken off the run. Third down 14. Low pass. Just no arm strength whatsoever. We're going to need an interception in their field position. Okay, so they got the ball in their own seven. Oh, how many times has that been close? That was me. How many times has that been close to being an interception pick six? Nice sack there by Mark Chick. Brings up a first or second down. No. Third down and ten. And that pass overthrown be a fourth down. That was more looked like the receiver just did not uh, extend his arms to try and catch that thing. Short punt. We're going to start in Malone field position. Seven minutes. Every minute goes by. Makes it one less. Not much harder to try and... Uh, Get in the score. You're telling the handoff he's going to get a yard. Not the Ryan Rattel that he would be, that's for sure. Pass complete to Virgil King, pick up a four. Plumador, King in the backfield. He's hand off to Plumador and he's going to lose two. Stupid play call.
into the end zone. Bad punt. So they take it over a, at the 25. That's U.S. NFL rules on a kickoff, not a punt. <clears throat> and a sack by Sam Grant or Scott Granish. The guy who played end in modified would go on to be a hell of an offensive lineman in high school. Plays out to a first down. Moody had a uh, relaxed on his coverage and that guy got a first down on us. Now that time, that time Vincent was right there to make the tackle. Hey, you notice how big my ass looks in this game? Everybody's really. Who drew these things? So second down and ten. Wide open and another first down. Nobody's covering that guy in the flat. Quarterback keeps it for four. How did he catch that? Holtz was right there. He should have made the tackle, but... I mean, he didn't make exactly. Should have made the interception. Second down, third down and two. Big play. Three thirty to go in the game. And he's going to be sacked again by Scott Granish. Huge play. Granish is not known as a showboat, so. That's video game logic for you. But they flipped field position and we're going to get this punt inside our own 10 again. With 3.03 to go, a field goal will not do it. We need to score a touchdown. On the draw to Rattel, he's going to pick up. They knock him back to where he was tackled. Instead of giving him forward progress. So it's now... Why are you calling timeouts now? There's some logic things in this game that hopefully are improved by... For 20. And that was just an ugly looking trick play as Rattel threw a pass into coverage. As he was getting hit, third down eleven. Niederbeel's going to be open by this coverage. Except they sent a man right back over there. Niederbeel's open. But he never turned around to look for the ball. And by the time I actually threw it, it was he was way too downfield for me. So, bad throw. That would have been a touchdown if he'd thrown it a few seconds earlier. And he couldn't go for it on 4th and 11.
Pass is complete to Hewitt, but he's not going to get the first down, and we're going to give them the ball inside our own 20 with 2.36 to go. Just a bad play. Makes you frustrated, you know. I'm trying to act as if I'm watching this in, in historical sense, but boy, I'm, I don't think I would have been that stupid. Trying to force a turnover. Quarterback flopping around down there. Richard Wilkerson on the tackle. And that gives us one timeout left. You know, you're thinking at this point, just hold them to a field goal. Get them to kick that field goal quickly. So you're down, you can tie up the game. Maybe go for two and win at 14-13. Just lack of offense, that's for sure. Granish again, that's like his third sack in this quarter. And that's the last timeout. So now you're down to no timeouts when you get the ball back. And the way the AI has been running things, I'm not confident that we'd have enough time. It is third to eleven, though. We're being up a fourth and five after the uh, Will Chaston KOs the receiver. And Vincent was on coverage. So it'll be a 28-yard attempt. And with all that, we're still down within range. It's a seven-point game. A little over a minute to go. Oh, stop running backwards. Now you just made us have to go 90 yards. Yep. 90 yards, a minute 32, and no timeouts. Oh, freaking computer. And a run play. Second down and six after that call. You do not have a lot of time to be doing this crap. And you get sacked. Awesome. Third down and six. Thirty-seven seconds. We've wasted so much time. I can't get over how much they really are acting like eighth graders, though. That pass complete to Muldoon. Now college rules the clock should stop, and it has twenty-eight seconds left. Okay, the clock starts now. Snap the ball. What the hell? That's a game. What the hell? That was a designed quarterback run. Three, two, one. Well, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, uh, maybe we can try some settings or something to make a computer improve before the next scrimmage. But join us next time for Vinnie Vincent Career Redo against Tupper Lake scrimmage. Until then, I'm Vinnie Vincent, and it's been fun. God bless America.